Scientists from China and the United States have created the world's first semiconductor made from graphene, a single layer of carbon atoms bound in a honeycomb-like shape. The discovery is seen as a huge leap forward for superfast computing beyond silicon, which is said to be reaching its limits. The global graphene market was valued at $865 million in 2022, and that's projected to grow to almost $3.5 billion by the year 2030. Graphene, the building block of graphite, is harder than diamonds and 200 times stronger than steel. It's used in a variety of sectors, including electronics and health. Some common uses include cooling technology in mobile phones, portable battery packs, and to coat your car to uh, protect the paintwork. Well, China is uh, the world's biggest graphene-producing country, making 630,000 metric tons of it every year, which was around 70% of the world's total in 2022, making up the top three producers are Brazil and Canada. Well, uh, Mei Li is uh, Chair Professor at Tianjin University, who leads the team of researchers who made this discovery. He showed me the graphene chip that they've created. Okay, so this is actually, this is a very, one of the, you know, very first, you know, uh, graphene-based um, you know, transistor. It works as a digital uh, uh, devices. You see what I mean? Yeah, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Before actually, people use graphene to make some device, but that's the in, uh, analog, uh, or you know, it's like elect, uh, uh, digital electronics, but with very bad in you know, of ratio. This one, the one what I have on, in my hand now, is the real one can work in you know, as a practical uh, uh, digital electronics. Now, I know this has been uh, your life's work and your colleagues' life work, and this has been. Uh, a huge endeavor. Just give uh, me an idea just, of the excitement that you finally get to this point. What's this journey been like for you? Okay, so I think, you know, this kind of experience, you know, or this kind of work, you start from uh, 2001, actually, my, uh, like, uh, uh, collaborator, or oh, my former supervisor, when I was in Georgia Tech, you know, watered here. He starts like graphene electronics back to 2001. And uh, then you know, afterwards, you know, like back to 2016, we actually moved back to China. Me and him, we founded this uh, center called the Tianjin International Center for Nanoparticle Nano Systems. And we constantly on the uh, the in graphene electronics. So uh, actually it's my students uh, work on our project, you know, Basically, you know, I assign him to use uh, uh, different uh, crystal facets, you know, to tune the particles of graphene. And in order to get some, like, special particles of graphene, and all of a sudden we found some special materials, uh, it uh, has huge uh, uh, flakes, and it's perfect crystal. And then we found this it has a band gap. This is a long uh, uh, standing problem for the graphene without uh, uh, the gap. But we found this is have the gap. I mean, it's an energy gap. So that means, you know, this is a perfect you know, semiconducting, semiconductor. So uh, then we get very excited because uh, this is uh, this is uh, people actually looking for this uh, 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 graphene with band gap for many, many years. Tell me about the timeline of what happens next. I mean, how long will it be before this has a substantial impact and brings a substantial change into our lives? Are we talking months, years, decades? So that is a good question, and also is a big question. Honest, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, if we look back, you know, the journey for silicon, you know, start from this, uh, you know, the beginning to uh, eventually be used as a, like a popular electronic materials took like uh, 50 years. So if we uh, do a simple calculation for this uh, for the graphene, and, and I think it started from 2001. And already like 24 years. If you think you know the the they have to experience same, same you know like period of time, you have to make a, a graphene to the graphene electrons. There must be another like 10 to 20 years, I think. This yeah. is an extraordinary story of international cooperation and collaboration, isn't it, between 
China and the yes. United States. How important has yes. that international collaboration been? Ah, yes, it is very important. I will say, note, if we don't have the international collaborations, you know, the development of science or technology in the world will be stopped. At least it's much, much slower than before. So I think, you know, international collaboration will be and already is okay for, uh, for the development of the science and technology in the world.